Welcome, New Mount Zion Church family and visitors, to another virtual Sunday School class from the Cross Comprehensive Review of Sacred Scripture. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your holy name. For your name is worthy to be praised. We pray that your will be done. We thank you for the love that you have for us, your grace and your mercy, and all of your goodness towards us. We thank you for supplying all of our needs, for being faithful to your word. And we thank you, Father, for the salvation that we have by faith in your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we prepare to study your word, we ask that you will prepare our hearts to forgive us of any sin that would hinder us from having fellowship with you, that you will prepare our hearts that we may hear from heaven. Help us that we may be doers of your word and not hearers only, that we may grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord, and we ask that you will bless us, that we may be a blessing to someone so that your name would be praised, so that your name would be glorified. We pray, Heavenly Father, and ask that you would bless our pastor with wisdom and understanding to lead us in the way that you would have for us to go, that you will bless his family and every member of our church family and the body of Christ as a whole with the blessings that we all stand in the need of. For it is in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. The date is September the 4th in the year 2022. To our visitors, our pastor, Reverend Larry L. Roundtree II, welcomes you to the New Mount Zion Church family, where we are, with God's grace, changing the world through the love of Christ, one soul at a time. This quarter's theme is God redeems and restores us. God has redeemed us from the curse with the precious blood of Christ, and he has restored us to a position of honor, fellowship, and relationship with God. He restores our souls. He restores the joy of our salvation. He restores our health. What a wonderful God we serve. He is worthy of praise, glory, and honor. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I am Deacon Keith Poe, and I will be serving as the facilitator for today's lesson. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? The hymn at the cross reminds us of God's great plan to redeem and restore us by sending his son to die for us. Today's lesson scripture, Genesis, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 5 and verse 7. The 15th chapter, verses 1 through 7. Today's lesson focus. Follow God wherever he leads you. From his sermon, Love Your Enemies, Martin Luther King Jr. made these profound remarks. Quote, To those who hate us, we shall say, we shall match our capacity to inflict suffering with our capacity to endure suffering. Do to us what you will, and we shall continue to love you. Throw us in jail. Bomb our homes and threaten our children. Send your hooded perpetrators of violence into our communities at midnight and beat us and leave us for half dead, and we shall still love you. But be ye assured that we will wear you down by our capacity to suffer. End quote. God is able to redeem us and restore us in the face 
of seemingly unsurmountable obstacles because his grace abounds where sin abounds. Romans the fifth chapter verse 20 and he wore down the sting of death by his son's suffering on the cross. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the 55th verse. Today we are in Unit 1. God calls Abraham's family with the first of four lessons. The Call of Abraham. Let us begin. Following God God called a man named Abram, later Abraham, to continue his plan of redemption for the world. Through this individual and his family, God established the Jewish nation. The father called Abraham to leave Mesopotamia and move to a land called Canaan. He promised to take Abraham to this place and multiply his descendants into a nation blessed with God's favor. A Place of Worship Abraham followed God's call and temporarily settled in Haran with his father and family. Then, at the age of 75, he departed Haran and headed to Canaan. He took his wife, Sarai, later Sarah, and a nephew named Lot. The family eventually arrived in Canaan and settled in Shechem. Once Abraham arrived in Canaan, God repeated his original promise to give the land to Abraham's descendants. Abraham built an altar to commemorate his encounter with God and establish a place of worship. God's Assurance Though God promised Abraham descendants, Sarah was barren, so Abraham expressed his plan to God. He assumed it was all right to adhere to the day's custom and allow his servant to inherit the promise. But God said no. The child of promise would come from Abraham's loins. God made Abraham look up at the countless numbers of stars in the sky and compared that to Abraham's descendants. Abraham believed in God and trusted in the Lord's promise of a child. His confidence and obedience was credited to him as righteousness. God also promised that one day his descendants will live in this land he was giving to his people. God never leads his people on a path to nowhere. Always follow his leading. He has an impeccable track record of getting you where he says he will take you. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verse 24. Section 1 is the life need and is intended for a small group discussion. We're asked to discuss why we need to trust God to follow him wherever he leads us. Once you have read the narrative, The Call of Abraham, in your student booklet, notice question one. Why do you think a person may not trust God in leading his life? Question one provides an opportunity for us to discuss what are some of the issues that hinder a person from trusting God to lead him through life. You may say that lack of trust often comes from not knowing who God is and understanding his love and sacrifice for us. Question 2. How do we develop a trusting relationship with God? Question 2 encourages us to reflect on what is needed to develop a trusting relationship with God. For example, spending time in his word, 
the Bible, in order to get to know him. Our trust in God grows as we watch his faithfulness in the minor areas of our lives. Then we will be willing to trust him with everything in our lives. Question 3. Is your level of trusting God keeping you from following him wherever he leads you? Question 3 allows us to evaluate our personal relationship with God and how much we really trust him. No one will follow someone they can't fully trust. God is fully worthy of our complete trust and will always lead us toward what is best for us. Section 2 is the Bible Learning. Learn how Abraham followed God's leading in his life. God calls Abraham. Our lesson scripture begins in Genesis, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 3, from the King James Version. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3 And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. The Lord told Abraham to leave all that was familiar to him and go into an unknown country. Abraham had no children yet, but God said he would bless Abraham's offspring to become a great nation. On Abraham's journey, whoever blessed him would be blessed and whoever cursed Abraham would be cursed. Because of Abraham's willingness to follow the Lord, all the people on earth would be blessed through him. Question 4. What did the Lord command Abraham to do? He told Abraham to leave his country and head to a land that the Lord would later reveal to him. Question 5. What did the Lord promise Abraham in exchange for his obedience? In exchange for his obedience, the descendants of Abraham would become a great nation, and all the peoples of the earth would be blessed through Abraham. Out of Ur, which is a Bible extra. God called Abraham out of the ancient Mesopotamian city of Ur. The people there worship Nana, the moon god. The god's priest led luxurious and opulent lives funded by an extensive slave trade located on the Euphrates River in present-day Iraq. Ur served as a major center of trade and commerce. During the time of Abraham, the great ziggurat of Ur was built, a step pyramid meant to honor the Sumerian gods. It was out of this culture, deeply embedded with paganism, that God called Abraham. The Nation's Timeline the great nation promised to Abraham turned out to be Israel. Here is the approximate timeline for major figures in Israel's history. Abraham lived around 2000 BC. Moses around 1500 BC. King David around 1000 BC. The exile in Babylon around 500 BC. And then the Messiah, Jesus Christ, 
appears to the nation of Israel another 500 years later. Abraham and Lot leave Haran. Genesis, the 12th chapter, verses 4 through 5 and verse 7. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. Verse 7 And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said unto thy seed, I will give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. Abraham obeyed the Lord and left Haran with his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, and his entourage. After Abraham had obeyed the Lord and arrived in Canaan, the Lord appeared to him and made a promise to him about giving the land to Abraham's descendants. Question 6 which of Abraham's relatives accompanied him on this journey to the promised land? Abraham's nephew, Lot, and his family chose to accompany Abraham to Canaan. Question 7. What did Abraham do to commemorate his arrival in Canaan? Once he arrived, Abraham built an altar to the Lord presumably out of large rocks to remember the Lord appearing to him. Haran was a major trade and cultural city in the upper northern part of the Fertile Crescent. Like Ur, Haran housed an elaborate temple for worship of the moon god Sin. Archaeologists believe this temple was an extension of its counterpart in Ur. The city's proximity to the Tigris River facilitated trade with Babylon. In many ways, Haran and Ur mirrored one another. Wealth's Numbing Effect The text tells us that Abraham and Lot continued to accumulate wealth in Haran and took most of the resources with them to finance their journey to Canaan. Abraham, along with Job, Boaz, David, Solomon, and others, is often looked to be a good example of a wealthy person who was able to maintain a sense of healthy dependence upon God. After talking with the rich young ruler, Jesus said that it will be easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a wealthy person to enter in the, to the kingdom of heaven. This is because wealth has a tendency to numb a person's perception of need, not only the need to be connected with others, but also with God. What makes the difference is the humility to recognize that God is the source of all that we have, not only our possessions, but the abilities, skills, and talents to generate the revenue to secure those possessions. Once we start to think that we can do this on our own without God, that's when the spiritual numbness sets in. What about Lot? Unlike some people in Abraham's group going to Canaan, Lot had options. He could have stayed in the secure, fertile environment in Haran, where he could continue to build upon the wealth that his grandfather's legacy had begun. Instead, 
he must have believed that God had spoken to Abraham and thus accepted his invitation to come along. Of course, we see Lot's flaws and brokenness in the narrative that follows as he moves to Sodom. Even so, the New Testament describes him as righteous. Second Peter, the second chapter, verses 7 through 8 which is a testimony of God's grace and compassion to all of us who have stains on our souls that need to be cleansed. God's Covenant with Abraham Genesis, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 7 After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of mine house is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and, lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Verse 7 And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. In a vision, the Lord reminded Abraham of who he is and his promise to him. The Lord confirmed that Abraham would have a son of his own to be his heir. Abraham's offspring would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. Abraham's faith in God's promises was credited to Abraham as righteousness. Question 8. What was Abraham's concern about how God's promise to him would be fulfilled? Since Sarah was barren, Abraham could not see how the promise could be fulfilled through his biological seed. Question 9. To what did the Lord compare the eventual fulfillment of his promise to Abraham? The Lord told Abraham to look at the night sky and count the stars, if that was even possible. That number would reflect the multitudes that would eventually fill Abraham's family tree. Inheritance Laws The law of Moses appeared on the scene about 500 years after Abraham. Numbers 27 outlines the right of inheritance in unusual circumstances when it comes to inheritance. If a man has no son, the inheritance is to pass along to the daughter. If there is no daughter, the inheritance was to be passed along to the man's brothers. If there were no brothers, then the money went to the father's brothers. If they did not exist, the money would go to the closest of kin. Moses made these modifications to keep money in the family. Prior to Moses, Abraham had the option of choosing an heir outside of the family. His suggestion of his servant Eliezer of Damascus as an heir may strike people today as unusual, 
but from a ceremonial standpoint, this would be legitimate. If a man in the ancient Middle East appointed an heir, this person would have the full rights and benefits of the one bestowing the blessing, as if he were a biological child. It is possible that Eliezer is the senior servant who Abraham sends back to the area of Haran years later to find a wife for Isaac. Genesis the 24th chapter verses 1 through 9. It is also possible that Eliezer is a near relative of Abraham living in Damascus and that steward of my house, Genesis the 15th chapter verse 2, and born in my house, verse 3, mean the same thing, that Eliezer is the lawful family heir. And now a window in the word, not logical. Throughout biblical history, people were asked to follow God without knowing where they were going or understanding what God was calling them to do. For example, God told Joshua to just walk in the Israelite army around the city of Jericho for six days before they tried to conquer the city. Joshua the sixth chapter. God instructed Gideon to reduce his army to 300 men when he faced thousands of Midianite troops. Judges, the seventh chapter. Ananias was told to go restore Saul's sight, knowing Saul's history of persecuting Christians. Acts the ninth chapter, verses 10 through 19. God's ways are not always our ways, and his ways are not always logical to us, but it is always best to follow his leading. Section 3 is the Bible Application. Identify things that hinder us from following God's leading. After you have read the section under the heading, Fear, notice questions 10, 11, and 12. Why is it important to share with God when you are afraid of following Him in the unknown? What role does spending time in God's Word have in eliminating our fears? And is God leading you somewhere or to do something that you are afraid to go or do? If so, what next step do you need to take? God can calm our fears about the unknown in the same way he calmed Joshua's fears of leading the people into the promised land. God said, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. We can read many similar promises God made to others in his word like Gideon and Joseph, Mary's husband. Small steps in the right direction may help us get over our fears. For example, before volunteering to teach Sunday school, you can ask to watch a class and see what you need to do. That can give you confidence. The apostles watched the Lord for three years, learning what to do after his resurrection. Section four is our life response. Say yes to God's leading in your life. We have studied the importance of following God's leading wherever he may lead us. Often God doesn't disclose his full plan or even tell us the next step, but he does call for trust and obedience. I encourage you to read My Soul Says Yes in the student book and answer the questions 
that follow. Once you have completed the activity in the student book, be mindful that the willingness to say yes to God's leading greatly depends on how well you know and trust Him. The key verse of our lesson today is from Genesis, the 12th chapter, verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Praise the Lord our God for blessing us with another opportunity to share in the study of his holy word. We praise and thank God for you joining us and for supporting the Sunday School Ministry of New Mount Zion. If it's the Lord's will, we invite you to join us for next week's lesson, continuing our study in the book of Genesis, the 25th chapter, verses 19 through 24. Make a list of all your family members, past and present, who have accepted God's redemption. Use the list to praise God as well as pray for those who are not yet saved or need restoration. Let us close out our day's lesson with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for demonstrating your faithfulness throughout the ages and that we can always trust your leading in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed, be safe, and be mindful that God redeems and restores us.